YouTube, let's get it on today with another video based on the hypertrophy series. We're going to discuss failure today. And as far as the topic of failure goes, I have my own understanding of what going to failure means. Going to failure does not mean that you fail. These are two different things. If you actually fail, then you failed going to failure. You should just go one rep shy of failing. Uh, if you miss that window and you end up eventually either slamming the bar on your chest on the bench and having to do the roll of shame, if you fell the squat and you have to bail, if you fell the deadlift and you have to let go of the bar, this was a direct miscal miscalculation on your part in your program that led to that. It should not happen. For size, if you're a powerlifter and you're training for strength, it might be something that is a prerequisite but it is not something that bodybuilders should experience. Every time you fail, you messed up. Now that that has been said, how do we make sure that the practice of going to failure with our lifts is going to lead to hypertrophy and muscle growth? Well, first off, what we talk about when we say going to failure, meaning going one rep short of failing means that you reached a point where you are at the upper echelon of the intensity range and you cannot go anymore because you are at 100%. 100% means that you cannot get another rep. So if, you're, if going to failure leads you to 100% of the intensity, the next rep that's going to be 102% is going to be the rep that you fail. So you want to get to the top of that intensity range every single time. And in my opinion, that holds true across the board. There is no point, at least from what I think, to not go to failure. Because if you don't go to failure, what are you doing? Technically, you are stopping short of achieving maximal muscular damage. Now, understand that there are different types of failure. We've discussed them and we're going to discuss more of them on this series. But if you are training effectively with good technique, you are tapping into your muscular endurance as much as possible without having to be stopped by cardiovascular endurance or mechanical failure. You can reach mechanical failure without reaching muscular failure. This does not constitute lifting to failure. When you see someone who lifts and they do squats, and uh, they eventually fall or fail because the, their thoracic spine rounds too much and the bar just falls on top of their head. They didn't fail muscularly, they fell mechanically. But that's going to be a topic for another video. So within the realm of muscular endurance, reaching muscular failure is the goal of the bodybuilder. And you want to reach that muscular failure with every single set, or at least walking sets. I say that because there are people who are going to make a distinction between easy and hard sets and are going to define easy sets as not going to failure and hard sets as going to failure. To me, this is not what I understand when I talk about hard sets. I will explain that term in details in another video, but going to failure is a given. And the reason why we want to go to failure is, as I said at the start of the video, it brings us to a point in the intensity range that is very beneficial for muscle growth because you're pushing the muscle to the limit. So you know you're damaging the muscle as much as possible. And anyone who actually applies that to their training will know how repeatable the act of going to failure is. I think that in a lot of people's mind, they associate going to failure with burning out. But the intensity you use for lift when you go to failure with it is going to be directly correlated with the time the muscle takes to recover, uh, the potential for injury, how much you can recover even within the same, uh, the same session, etc., etc. Of course, going to failure on a deadlift with two rep maxes is going to be completely different on your muscular system than going to failure on a deficit deadlift where you do 8 to 12 reps. These are completely different ballgame. This is why 
you need to take the turn going to follow with a grain of salt because as with many things in lifting there are variables that come into play that might not be expressed uh, right off the bat but that basically make or break the turn if you go to failure on super heavy lift with super high intensity all the time, then yes, your practice of going to failure is unbalanced and it's not going to lead to good gains. If you go to failure all the time on low intensity, high rep ranges, then it's also an unbalanced use of the practice because you're not going to uh, be able to reach the type of muscular fatigue that's going to lead to size. We want the best of both worlds. We want strength work and variation accessory work. Now, the topics of volume and intensity, of course, play a key role in understanding the notion of going to failure. Depending on who you are, your ability to go to failure repeatedly within a set, or if you do a giant set, for example, or within a session is going to be strikingly different. So you need to understand where you stand. But it is not, or at least from my understanding, not possible for someone to, for example, do a, tw a set of 12, 12 reps, go to failure, and then not be able to get at least eight reps on the next set. This should not be doable. Unless you used certain methods to hype yourself up for the 12 reps, the beauty of going to failure is that it's going to allow you to scale down the number of reps you do, and if you apply evolving rep ranges, this is going to allow for a very steady progression of volume that's going to lead to more tonnage over time. A lot of uh, people don't really think about volume when they talk about going to failure. And in a sense, it's fair because what is going to create failure is, as I said, the intensity rate reach. But keep in mind that intensity does not exist without volume and, then, and that the number of reps you do increases the intensity of the, 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 of the lift that eventually leads to muscular failure, which is also why you're going to find that going to failure, as I said, on higher reps is not going to be the most beneficial because you're going to reach cardiovascular or mechanical failure first. So certain rep ranges are going to be strictly more interesting when it comes to going to failure for us. For me, for example, my favorite rep ranges are 2 to 5, 4 to 8, 6 to 10, 8 to 12, and 12 to 15. That's my bread and butter. That's where I stay because I know that each of these categories is going to allow me to go to failure and manipulate volume and intensity in a way that's going to be beneficial for my overall tonnage and therefore make me bigger over time. So that's pretty much all there is to know about going to failure when it comes uh, to hypertrophy. Uh, if you have any questions about the topic, things you want to add, things that you want to debunk, that you don't agree with, I would be happy to discuss them with you in the comments. Please let leave a remark below and I'll be happy to discuss with you. Have a good day.